Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic. If this is your first visit, welcome. I hope you'll find some inspiration in this video and in the hundreds of other videos that I have on my channel. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit the notification bell, and that way you'll know every time I upload fresh content. Today we're working under natural light and there's a couple of flies buzzing around, so I hope those things aren't distractions. Today I want to talk you through a new kit, it's called Printemps, which is French for spring, and it's been inspired by some of the colours that I am seeing in my new French garden, and this is the journal that I have made from the kit. I'll show you all of the sheets in the kit, but I just want to quickly talk you through this and flip through this so you get an idea of what you could be doing with the kit. The first thing to tell you about is probably the most important thing that the kit contains, and that is this template. This is a template that will make you a five by seven journal with a single signature. And the orange line tells you where you need to fold. These dots tell you where you need to punch little holes. And then there's a a uh, route that tells you exactly how to sew your signature in place. It's made so easy for you and the, the uh, instructions are available in word form as well as visual form because everybody likes to take information in differently. That will make you, and this is an example of a previous journal that I've made, that will make you a journal like this. You'll have one row of stitching on the outside, it will be one signature, I'll find the centre for you, so you have one signature like this, and although this book is great, it's only limited by the fact that you can't always stuff a lot into these single signature journals because it puts too much strain on the stitching. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can alter your journal and you can make five signatures. So the kit contains the template that will allow you to make a single signature journal, but if you want to take your skills the next level up, this video will show you how you can make five signatures. And what is great about that is that you can see there's a lot of space there for stuffing, uh, for photographs and memory things and pieces from magazines or anything like that or old letters. And I'm going to quickly flip you through one of these signatures to give you an idea of just how much you can pack into these journals. So let me just talk you through this. I've got a piece of washi paper here, which I'm using as a belly band to tuck uh, one of these rather pretty little journal cards into. I've backed my journal cards with some matching blue card that I had in my stash. The kit includes tags and the tags have been specially sized so that they will fit inside these envelopes, as will the journal cards that I showed you a moment ago. But the important thing that I want to show you here is just how flexible the colour arrangements are. You don't need to worry about colour matching because that's all done for you as part of the kit. And the washi strips just give you some extra options for how you can colour up your, your journal and where you can add little lozenges with some of the words in them that are also in the kit. Uh, there are some corners that are in the kit as well. You just cut those down and glue them into position. I've added some lace down one side of this page to give the whole journal extra texture and also one of the pieces of washi tape which I'm using as a tuck spot for another of the journaling cards. This is one of two large bookmarks. I've backed this again using some uh, blue cardboard from my stash and I've used another piece of washi tape across the bottom here as a little tuck spot for everything. This is the centre of my signature and you can see there the daisy stitch that's holding everything in place really nicely and I've used one of the corners as a tuck spot for the envelope and just to show that they fit there's one of the journaling cards in the envelope. This page is pretty packed. I wanted to show you just how much stuff you can stash into one signature. So I've used one of the four postcards here to contain two of the other little postcards that have been cut down. Of course, you can use the reverse of these for journaling on. And I've also added a little tag there. And I've got the other postcard, which is a rather pretty light shade, tucked in here. And I've used one of the bookmarks as a, as a tuck spot. Well, actually as a belly band because I've only secured it at the top and the bottom. I wanted to talk to you about the envelopes. The envelopes are quite fun. So, when you, uh, when you get your kit, there is one envelope included in the kit, and it's this one, and it has this little lozenge on the front, which is great for adding uh, words or script or addresses or anything like that, and maybe you want to make a note of what you've put on inside the envelope. But there are also 
these, uh, there are two extra, I'm calling these lozenges, so there's one in cream and there's one in blue, and you can cut these out and you can add them onto your envelope if you wanted to change out the colour. The other thing that you can do, once you've uh, printed and cut out your envelope, is you can use it as a template. I've actually printed this on two sides so that I've got something on the inside and on the outside. I didn't want plain white anywhere on this envelope. And what to do is just put it on a piece of paper, draw around the outline, and then cut it out. And then that way you can create envelopes out of any of the sheets in the kit. And that's quite a nice thing to do. And then you've also got the lozenges that you can cut and put on the front. It's how I did this envelope. I used the page that's printed out with all the washi on it, and I used it to cut out an extra envelope. The other thing that I've done Instead of using a lozenge on this envelope, I've, uh, I've taken a strip of paper from one of the pages, I've cut three sides and then very deliberately on the, on the final side I've ripped it and it gives it a much more organic feel. And that's quite a nice way to swap out your envelopes and make them look a little bit different. Also with this, the way that I store it in my journal is by tucking the flap in like that. And it's another way that I can get some hidden journaling in there or private journaling. And then I've added a strip of ribbon, some matching ribbon that I found in my stash. Uh, I've glued this into position and then I've glued a piece of washi tape over the top. And that is just one signature. So if you do five signatures, you can multiply this by four times <laughs> and you can get absolutely loads into your journal. So I hope that's given you some inspiration and will give you some ideas as I flip you through the sheets in the kit. Let me talk you through each of the sheets in the kit and I'll explain how they can be used. So each sheet has got some imagery on it and some of them have got some words on them from spring themed poems. The, um, the words are deliberately slightly faded and in a font that isn't easily uh, readable. The reason for that is because they are there to take up the white space in the page. Years ago, when I was teaching scrapbooking classes, people were very intimidated by the white space on the page and it would stop their creativity because they felt that they had to fill every, every part of the page. But doing things this way with something already on the page takes away all of that pressure. There's something there already, you can include it as part of your page design or you can cover it over. It's entirely your choice. And these little poems are just a way of breaking up the white space, breaking up the page. The uh, themes are springtime, butterflies, blossoms, fresh flowers, beautiful soft pastel colours because that has been the inspiration I've drawn from watching my garden developing and springing into life. These are four postcards uh, and you can cut them out and you can back them with some backing sheets which I'll show you in just a moment. There are, you might be able to hear Buster. <laughs> Hello darling, you come to see me. Um, and then there are two bands, these can be used as bookmarks or as belly bands and there is the all important template and this is the template that will tell you where to position holes and how to stitch your journal together if you want to make a single signature 5x7 journal size. There are some journaling cards and uh, you can cut these out and use these to drop into your journal any place you fancy. There is an envelope and this envelope is designed so that it will fit these journaling cards. And the, uh, the reason that there are two extra lozenges here is if you wanted to change the colour of this, you can simply use these. Just cut them out and stick them in the place where that one is. And there are eight journaling cards. You can see they have holes already identified so you can punch through those if you want to. And then there are washi bands. Now, these are uh, some very, very long pieces of paper that have been designed so that the, the flowers are scaled to the depths of the washi papers. So these are an inch wide and these are half an inch wide. I've made them as long as I could put onto a sheet. So these are actually 11 inches long and that's important if you want to choose them as to fold around the outside of your journal to use as bands around your journal. 
there are two corners and then there are some uh, spring inspired words in little soft boxes. There are two backing papers. These are backing papers that are as wide and as large as I can make to fit on a standard A4 sheet. The reason being that this way you can print your journal cards and you can print a backing paper on the back of these and it will cover the whole sheet of journal cards and it means that you've got something on the reverse. So if you don't want to print these so they're backed with white on the reverse, you can print onto a pattern sheet. And the same goes with the journal cards with the holes in the top. If you want them to be plain white backed, just print them off. If you want them to have a backing, use one of the backing papers. And of course, the backing papers can also be used as sheets for, as additional sheets for your journal. In preparation to make my journal, I have printed on the reverse of each of these sheets. And you can mix this up however you choose. And all I need to do now is cut these out and it means that when I fold them together I've got a double-sided sheet. I want to show you how I've constructed my journal. So to begin with I had those double-side printed pages and I've put them all together into five signatures and I've got four sheets of double-sided paper in each signature. Then I've put them all together and I've used a couple of bulldog clips to hold them in place and I've taken a metal ruler and my scalpel blade which um, I protect the end of with a wine cork and um, I've trimmed off all of the edges. This is something you may or you may not want to do. I decided for this journal that I wanted the edges all to be nice and smooth and equal. Once I'd completed this it meant I was able to take measurements from it. So I don't want to get hung up on measurements because your journals may be a slightly different size depending on whether or not you decide to cut around the edges and you might decide that you want to cut away a bit more or make it narrower to suit your purpose. So I'll show you the methodology rather than telling you specific measurements. So I found the measurement of the width of the book and then I decided that because I had five signatures I would create a little grid for myself. This is my grid and I'll tell you about this in just a moment but this gave me the width of my book so it told me how wide it needed to be and I just added that measurement to the width times two. So width times two and the depth of the spine. Once I had those measurements I cut a cover that would fit from Craftex. This is Craftex. It's white, the one that I'm using today, but it comes in a variety of colours. And Craftex, you might recognise uh, this Craftex logo. Um, it's an amazing paper fabric that doesn't rip, but you can cut it and you can punch holes in it, as I've done here. And it's very flexible. You can sew into it, you can ink onto it, you can stamp onto it. It's ever so versatile. And it's very, very good for making covers for journals. So I've just cut a single piece and this is where I'm going to show you what my grid has to do with constructing my journal. So these are, these are the outer pages and then this is the inside grid where I'm going to sew in my signatures. The measurements on my grid are a half centimetre or a quarter inch for each signature. I've got five signatures, therefore I've got a measure of half a centimetre here, then a hole, half a centimetre, then a hole, half a centimetre, then a hole. And the distance between them is one and a half centimetres. One and a half centimetres roughly equates to just under three quarters of an inch. So I measured and drew those distances and then I punched holes where the lines met. And this grid looks slightly different to anything that we've done before because I'm going to show you a different way of binding. Uh, I'm going to show you a way of binding that's called daisy stitch or chain stitch and it looks really pretty. So this is now ready to create my cover for my journal and I've looked out some scraps of lace that I might use. I've also torn some pages from a printout of the journal so that I can begin to colour match uh, the cover 
to what will be on the inside pages. But before I do anything more on decorating the cover, I'm going to use a template that I made to show you how we're going to do the binding. I'm not going to assume that everybody has got waxed linen book binding thread. I'm using ordinary embroidery thread. But the way that I can strengthen this and the way that I can make it easier to pull through these holes when it's on a needle is by waxing it with beeswax. Any beeswax will do. You could even use a candle if you don't have a, as long as it's a beeswax candle, if you don't have a block of beeswax like this. And I'm simply going to draw the embroidery thread through the beeswax or across the beeswax block three or four times until I'm happy with the coverage on my thread. You don't want it to be so waxy that it becomes tacky. But the other thing that the beeswax will do is it will help stop it knotting and getting all curled up and twisted as you're sewing. And that's a real bonus because I'm going to work with a fairly long piece of thread. So I can feel that has wax on it, but it's not tacky and it's not going to come off on anything else. Maybe you can also see that this is now less floppy. It's got a little bit more rigidity to it, so it's not curling itself up and getting in a tangle and getting in a knot. I've got a nice wide-eyed needle. It's quite a long needle. It's quite a sturdy needle. And I'm going to start showing you how to do the stitch using the template. This is a good idea because it gives you an opportunity to practice. And I've got several templates that I use for different, uh, when I'm experimenting with different stitches. And it means that you're not trying this for the first time on your actual journal. This gives you a little practice and it will help you develop a little bit of um, muscle memory and just memory so that um, you don't spoil, you don't risk the uh, spoiling your journal. So imagine this is the outside of the cover. The signatures are on the inside. You have to imagine this because I'm not going to show you, not yet. This is how to work with the template. So we've worked from the inside to the outside and now we're going to go back into the same hole that we've just come out of. We're going to draw the thread back through to the beginning. We're going to go to the next hole down. We're working from the inside to the outside and out we pop. and just pull that. Then we go back into the hole we've just popped out of and we hang on to the thread to create the next loop working from the inside to the outside. We come back up in that loop Pull it taut and then proceed to the next one. Go back into the hole, all the time you're securing your signature as you're working through onto the inside and then we come back out to the front again, catch that loop and pull it taut. I'm using a really thick piece of card but when you're um, pulling this taut on your paper or whatever else you're using. Just be aware of the limitations of whatever the material is that you're using and make sure you don't over tighten it uh, or you don't pull it too taut. And then continue with this stitch all the way to the bottom of your signature. You should have a nice tail left at the top here. Hang on to this because this is what we're going to use to tie it off once we've sewn in all of the signature. We've now completed our row of stitching and I'm going to show you how to finish this off. So we take the needle back through that final hole, working inside the signature. We finish that off with a knot. And then just take the needle under the thread to tidy it up and cut the excess away. And that's exactly what you'll do with this as well. With the bit of thread that you left at the very beginning, thread the needle through it, tie a knot and then slide it back under 
to keep the, the uh, stitch neat. The other thing about using wax thread is that if you press it down like that, it would actually hold that position much better than a loose thread that hasn't been waxed at all. My cover is prepared. I've done some random stitching. I've done some zigzag stitching. I've added lace, little scraps of lace, two different types, and here on the reverse as well. I found some nice beige ribbon, which I've added and I've secured with zigzag, and I've included some strips uh, that I've ripped from the some of the pages that I've printed out. On the inside, you can see the stitching. Now, there's a number of things that you can do. I'm going to leave it blank for my purposes today, but you could glue a piece of fabric over the inside of that. I've done that on previous journals and videoed it too. I've also added some buttons. I've used some long thread and I've tied it and I've left really long ends. And that combination just adds lovely texture to the cover of my journal. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to mark my signatures. So I have five signatures. This is one. And I'm going to use the template that we use to practice the stitching. I'm going to line it up against the spine. I'm going to use my pencil and I'm just going to make a little mark where those dots, where those holes need to be positioned on the, ins on the outside fold. And then I've got a pokey tool and I can poke the holes through. Alternatively, if you really want to go to the expense of getting something that will give you a really professional finish, you could buy something like this. This is called a screw punch and it has a little uh, hole on the end. You can, you can get holes of various sizes to fit on the end and you just push it down and it will punch out a perfect little hole. But for years, before I bought my screw punch, this is what I used. And I will repeat that for the other four signatures that will go in my book. My signatures are all prepared and I'm going to start working from the left to the right. In other words, from the front of the book to the back of the book. This is my first signature and I've got my thread all ready and waxed. I've cut a piece of thread that is three times the height of the book, which should be a nice generous amount. So working from the inside of my signature to the outside of my cover. I'm going to do exactly the same stitch as we practiced with our template. And I'm going to make sure when I pull this through that I leave a nice long piece of thread ready for me to uh, tie in at the end. Here is my completed sewn journal. I wanted to show you that because we're sewing in the signatures individually, if you want to vary the color that you use, you can. So I've gone for some, some colors that will stand out a little bit more. They're just slightly stronger than pastel shades, but I think they go really nicely with the rest of my journal. So all that remains for me to do now is to add the pockets and the little details and maybe some of the envelopes and the tags from the rest of the kit. But the other thing that's nice about having um, signatures, five signatures sewn in this way is it means I've got a lot more room in my book and because I've left a half centimeter or quarter inch of spacing there I can make this book really thick and really fill it. I hope you found that video useful. I hope it's inspired you. I hope you will give it a go and try maybe try the chain stitch as something different or if it's the first journal that you've made, just do a single signature using your template from the kit. This makes it so much easier for you. I'm going to say thank you very much for your time, as always, and until we meet again, stay safe and take care.